Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, some of you have pointed out to me that we are absolutely drowning in box sets. Just, just scats of stuff. And we are. It's just, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? It really is. I, I don't know what to make of it. I'm, I'm completely flummoxed with the amount of product that's out, the amount of stuff there is to listen to and the choices that we have. And I, I wish I could somehow simplify things for you all. I really do. I, I, I try, you know, to, to somehow winnow the, the, the pool down, but it's almost impossible. It really is, especially when you have boxes that have some great stuff and some less great stuff, but there's no way to get the great stuff because individual releases have vanished by the wayside, at least with streaming. You can often get specific individual performances, but if you're looking for physical product, you've got a real problem on your hands and you wind up getting these boxes and 99% of them you can't listen to and don't have time for. And, and, and I can't blame you. I just can't. I mean, that's just the way it is. I have no choice. So with that said, another John Elliott Gardner box. Now, I've already done the Universal Archive, the DG Archive box, and there has got to be coming at some point a DECA box with all the Phillips stuff, which is really actually going to be monumentally important because some of his best work was done for Phillips. And I, I well, we'll deal with it when it comes. But in the meantime, the Arado stuff, for the most part, is earlier than his Universal stuff. I mean, it was before he became, you know, um, somebody with an unbelievably pompous and arrogant attitude who is so full of himself as to be insufferable. And the music making benefits from that accordingly, because he's not preaching from on high. He hadn't become quite as intolerably rigid as an interpreter. Um, and there's some sort of fun stuff in here because it's not his usual fach. He gets to do some other things here. So let's see what's in this 60, 64 CDs. Is it 60, 64 CDs? Uh, thud. All right, here we are. Do I have to go through all this? Yes, it's all original jackets. Okay, you get a little tiny bookie. This is just a little, little teeny booklet. 64 CDs um, with pictures of Gardner looking quite young and almost friendly, which is about as close as he ever got. Um, I remember interviewing him. Oh, what a, what a chore that was. You know, I know. I said to him, I said to him, thank you for speaking to me. I know you're very busy. And he says, yes, I am very busy. And I just wanted to hang up the phone right there. I almost did. I made it as short an interview as I possibly could. Anyway, so let's get to it, shall we? All right. Mm -hmm. What is this? All right. Oh, God. Ready? Here we go. <sighs> Purcell, funeral music for Queen Mary and the birthday ode, Come Ye Sons of Art. Um, these were beautiful discs. You know, Gardner's Purcell was wonderful. There were some things he really kind of got. I love doing this. It airs me out here while I'm talking. Purcell was one. Handel was another. Gluck was marvelous. I mean, he was really good with that stuff. Let's not kid ourselves. So that's nice to have. I mean, these are all with, with you know, the Monteverdi Choir and, and those people. And you get, let's see, who else do we have here? And the Monteverdi Orchestra, which is a pickup group. It was Felicity Lott and Charles Brett and John Williams and Thomas Allen, like real honest-to-goodness singers, because they used them in those days. They didn't use period instrument specialists with funky voices. Handel, Dixit Dominus, Coronation Anthem Number 1. Well, I, I like the, the, the Dixit Dominus that's on um, Harmonia Mundi, you know, the one coupled with, what is it, the funeral music for Queen Caroline? I mean, that to me just blows me away, especially in the Conquasabit. But it's a very good Dixit Dominus. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Rameau, La Danse, um, the Act de Ballet, rare and fun to have with Jill Gomez, Anne-Marie Rada, and Jean-Claude Orliac singing, um, and other people. I love Rameau. I mean, Rameau, it doesn't matter what it is. You just get it because it's fun. Handel, The Ways of Zion Du Morne. Which was actually the which was the funeral music for Queen Caroline, which was adapted as the first part of Israel and Egypt to make it longer, and then everybody got rid of it because they like Israel and Egypt to be shorter in two parts. So there you go. But there it is, uh, Massenet. Oh, this is so much fun. 
Massenet's Scenes for Orchestra. I mean, Gardner was like, so not a Massenet conductor. This is with what the Monte Carlo Orchestra, well, I'll bet they got on splendidly, don't you think? You've got the two discs here, the Scène Dramatique, Scène de Ferry, the Scène Alsacienne, and the Scène Pittoresque. Also, you get Don Quixote um, with two orchestral excerpts and The Last Sleep of the Virgin, the prelude of the Assumption. Ooh, yeah, yeah, they're fun. They're good performances. They're fresh and lively, and he can't wait to get it over with, which is usually a good thing when you're dealing with French music. Just kidding. All right, Handel, Israel and Egypt. Oh, this is one of the great ones. Fabulously sung, fabulously played. Monte Verdi Choir and Orchestra. It's just terrific. Absolutely terrific. Uh, Purcell, music for the Chapel Royal. And it's got all kinds of bits of Chapel Royal stuff. And you've got not just Purcell, by the way. You've got Matthew Locke and John Blow and Pelham Humphrey, his verse anthem, Oh Lord, My God, for soloist, four-part chorus, strings, and continuo. It's a nice little thing to hear what was going on in the Chapel Royal, especially now that we've had the coronation of what's-his-name. Um, that's always interesting. I wonder what's happening in his Chapel Royal. Hmm. Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, Purcell, The Tempest, the semi-opera, lovely. The Purcell stuff's all great. It really is. The Indian Queen, there it is. I mean, I'm not going into this in detail with singers and people and stuff. These are generally well-known. If you don't know Gardner, if you don't know his performances and recordings, don't worry. You'll, you'll learn. <laughs> Give it some time. It's not going to help if I read you know, boring lists of people over and over again. Okay, Stephen Varco, Martin Hill, John Elwes, Rosemary Hardy. There, you see what I mean? Not interesting. Andre Compra, the Requiem, beautiful disc of French music, which he didn't do too much of. All things considered, Judith Nelson, Dinah Harris, Jean-Claude Orliac, Wayford Evans, Winford Evans, Winford Evans, Stephen Roberts, and like other French people. Uh, Handel, oh, this is great too. L'Allegro, Il Penseroso et Il Moderato. This is gorgeous. First of all, it's just an incredibly great work. A magnificent work. Absolutely beautiful. And and it has in the, the third part that no one cares about because it's moderate, which has some of those beautiful music Handel ever wrote. There's that, what is it, As Steals the Morn or whatever it is. It's a duet. Oh my God, it's to die for. Absolutely to die for. This is really fun. It's a pastoral ode. It's not an oratorio particularly. And it's not an opera. It's a thing based on poems by John Milton, really kind of stupid poems by John Milton, I have to say, arranged by Charles Jennings, and it is one of Handel's great masterpieces. And this was a wonderful recording. I remember when it came out, um, I just adored it, except for Michael Ginn, the boy soprano, who I could sort of do without. Um, you know, Handel never used people like that. He used normal, normal women most of the time. Bach motets, here they are, and some cantatas, uh, a couple cantatas. Uh, Jesu, minor four, no, that's, those are quartets. The Cantata Movement, known as Das Heil und die Kraft. And this is like all of the pieces by Bach that could have been called motets, even if they're not necessarily by Bach. So you get more of them than you usually do. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them. Um, and, you know, some, some of them are attributed to Kunau or other people. So uh, it's nice to get the complete almost by Bach motets. Handel, Concerti Grossi, Opus 3. Um, I think they're just better performances of these. They're good. They're sort of early period instrument performances. I, I prefer, um, you know, the ones with, uh, what's his name? You know, Lars Ulrich Mortensen, for example, on CPO. Those are really good. Um, these did not, did not excite me. Uh, let's see, more Handel. Let's see, Handel, Purcell, 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 Purcell. More personal. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Handel, water music. Okay, we get the water music. It sounds wet. Enough said. Millions of period instrument performances of water music. This is neither better nor worse than those. Okay, some Bach cantatas. Chris Lag in Totes Banden and Aus der Tiefer, Aus der Tiefer Rufe ich Herr zu dir, which is De Profundis Clamavia de Domine. You know that one? From the depths I cry to you. Bach cantatas, yeah, okay. Handel, Semele, oh, I love Semele. What a great piece. My favorite recording of Semele is the one on DG with Kathleen Battle, who is the personification of narcissism. 
as Semele and with Marilyn Horn and John Nelson conducting in modern instruments. It sounds great. Um, this one with Norma Burroughs, Patrizia Quella, Elizabeth Friday, Della Jones, Catherine Denley. It's not bad, but there have been better Semele's since, um, like that one, and there have been a couple others besides. So, uh, you know, some of these period instrument things have not worn well. They're already sounding a little long in the tooth, I think, which tells you perhaps that the musical approach lacked something in in, in expressive completeness, right? Okay, Gluck, Don Juan. Oh, fabulous ballet with the original version of The Dance of the Furies. And Gardner's Gluck is a discovery. It's one of the best things he ever did, anything by Gluck that he did. Important, wonderful stuff. Um, and it's, it's oh, it's fun. It's just enormous. It's got a, it's got a, 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 a what you call it, a fandango in it or something. One of those things, it's so Spanish. And you wouldn't think it. First time I heard it, I went, ooh, that's Spanish, right? Yeah, he actually did a little Spanish stuff. It's not just typical post-Baroque pre-classical stuff, whatever typical post-Baroque pre-classical stuff is supposed to sound like. Purcell, the Ode to St. Cecilia. Oh, hail bright Cecilia. This is lovely. It's fun to listen to. It's charming. It's very Sicilian. Uh, Monteverdi, Bali e Balletti. This is fun stuff from from Orfeo, some madrigals. You get Tirsi e Clori, the ballo, and bits of Orfeo, and stuff from Scherzi Musicali and other madrigals. And oh, it's just, it's great. It's Monteverdi, it's wonderful. What's not to love, right? It's well sung. Patrizia Quella and Anthony Rolf Johnson and Lawrence Dale and Alan Woodrow and, you know, the Monteverdi Choir and the English Baroque soloists. By then he had his own group, you know. Okay, Rameau, Dardanus, orchestral suite, from Dardanus. Let's be clear. Rameau's dance music is a delight. It's one of the you know, glories of the ballet of dancetum, or dancitude, or whatever you want to call it. And this is quite, quite enjoyable. And then we have Les Boireades, the, the, the whole, all three discs of the complete thing. Um, you know, these opera ballet things by Rameau, I, I love them. Some people hate them. I, when I did a th that thing about composers you could get rid of, one of you mentioned Moreau, Rameau, Moreau, Rameau, I, I, no, absolutely not. I mean, he was he was he was astounding. It's great fun. So that that's a thing to have the Bach overtures, all four of them. Couldn't care less. Zillions of performances of these pieces. I don't personally find them all that compelling, except for the one with the flute. You know, that has the Bedinelli that everybody loves, which I love too. Um, you know, it, it, it's okay. You can't kill them. Nobody does. Ah, uh, Purcell King Arthur. Greatness, great fun, all kinds of stuff here. I love King Arthur. Don't we all love King Arthur? All right, there we go. Well, let's see what we have next. All righty. See, all the personal stuff in here is definitely worth getting. Like I said, Scarlatti, Stabat Mater. Well, that's rare. Domenico's Stabat Mater, beautiful, beautiful work with music by Cavalli, Gesualdo, and Clemens Non Papa. Um, so that's really nice to have. That's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, Handel, Alcina and Il Pastor Fido and Terpsichore. This is ballet music by Handel. This is a nice, unusual disc to have. You know, again, you know, you find it now it's buried in 64 CDs. It would have been so nice if you could just get this wonderful disc of Handel ballet music, right? But you have no choice. Chabrier, yay, Etoile, the opera comique. An opera bouffe, actually. It's an opera buffo. It's delightful. Of course, Gardner had, was about as funny as a crutch. He had no sense of humor whatsoever that was detectable in his performances or in his persona. Maybe I'm wrong. Other people may know him as a laugh riot. So what do I know? But I will tell you that uh, Chabrier's music is just great. And this is a wonderful performance with Colette Alio Lugaz and and Georges Gautier and Gabriel Bacquier and other fun people with the Opera de Lyon when he was back. He was in Lyon for a while. And he made some really good records there. He didn't last long, but he made some really good records there. And this was one of them. So yeah, I mean, a whole Chabrier work that's not España. Whoa, go for it. And you know, he, he may not be like a laugh riot, but he was, he kept it moving. You know, he's, he's, he was a disciplinarian. It was lively and vigorous and all that stuff. So that's good for this music. Handel Tamerlano, three discs of that 
with uh, Nancy Argenta, Jane Finley, Derek Reagan, uh, Michael Chance, Chance, whatever his name is, Nigel Robson, and Rene Shearer. Problem here is the counter tenors. It's always the counter tenors. Better use women. It really is. Because, you know, Tamerlano is a counter tenor. Performance is okay. The opera is great. There are better ones because we have better counter tenors now. We have counter tenors who really sing out. I mean, they've trained themselves to be operatic counter tenors rather than, than you know, uh, chapel royal emasculata counter tenors. So, I mean, it has its pluses and minuses. Uh, let's see. Oh, Leclerc, Scylla and Glaucus. Now, there is a rarity, a French, a French opera thing from the early 1700s based on Ovid's Metamorphose. Um, and you've got the usual French things, dances and arias and things, and that's fun to have. It's a rarity. I mean, anything that doesn't have a dozen recordings, generally speaking, I want, right? Because you can't get it anywhere else. Schubert, Symphonies 8 and 9, with the Orchestra of the Lyon Opera. Why? Berlioz, no, Bizet. Bizet Symphony and the original La, La Lysienne incidental music. Um, some of it in its original orchestration is sweet, um, nice, lively. The Orchestra of the Opera de Lyon. Gardner did, you know, normal music with normal instruments, proving thereby that there was absolutely no reason for him to do normal music with normal instruments because he had virtually nothing to offer. Fortunately, these, mu these pieces are light and charming and don't require any particular depth or any particular interpretive point of view. And so we don't get any particular depth or interpretive point of view. Uh, Berlioz, L'Enfance du Christ, um, with Anne-Sophie von Otter, Gilles Cachemay, José Van Damme, Jules Bastin, I mean, Anthony Rolf Johnson, wonderful singers. First-class singers, and uh, generally speaking, a very nice performance. So, I mean, there aren't many bad L'Enfance du Christ, are there? I mean, there just aren't. Messager, Fortunio, yeah, another wonderful little piece of lyrical comedy. It's, it's sui generis, so we need to have it. We absolutely need to have it. Gluck, uh, Iphigenie and Aulid. Gorgeous and a great performance. This is one of the best things Gardner ever did. It's powerful. It's intense. It's, it's gaunt and austere as Gluck can be, but not without passion. And, and oh, it's just marvelous. Of course, you have no texts, no translations. or are screwed, especially with Gluck, because there are 700 versions of everything. And you don't know which one you're going to get. Fortunately, I have the complete Gluck edition. I can find the score that he's actually using. The finale of this is in an appendix somewhere. You know, Purcell, Timon of Athens, and Diocletian. All the Purcell, like I said, self-recommending. Ah, Offenbach, Les Brigands. The Brigands. Yes, like I said, there he is. You know, China Lake Gardner trying to be funny. Oh, dear. I mean, you know, but it's lively, like I said, just like the Messager and the other stuff that he did. You know, Chabrier's L'Etoile, it's, it's vigorous. And vigor goes a long way when you have good singers, and he does. So this is fun. Offenbach is another composer who I always want to do. What's ironic about this is, could you imagine Gardner doing Gilbert and Sullivan? Hmm. I mean, he got away doing Offenbach because he was, you know, in Lyon at the time, and, you know, he did one. You know, but I just, just sort of, I find that very funny, Gardner doing Gilbert and Sullivan. I mean, that's what you kind of get when he does comedy. So, you know. Okay, Couperin. Couperin stuff. Uh, La Parnasse ou La Patios de Corelli. The concert in the theatrical style. The uh, instrumental uh, concert. Instrumental sur le titre de Patios. Apollon persuade Lully et Corelli for the reunion, the things that they, oh my God, they do all kinds of stuff here. I can't even begin to read all this French. Um, it's very, very good. It's a very good disc. Barbara Hendricks, Ravel Scheherazade, two Hebrew, Hebrew melodies, the five popular Greek melodies, and the vocalies in, in the form of a habanera, and Du Parc's orchestral music. I mean songs, his orchestral songs, one, two, three, four, five, six of them, which is all he left, basically. Um, lovely. Absolutely lovely. And you know, Gardner is a good accompanist. He was just accompanying. And that's what he does. He did it well. Carissimi, Jephtha, Oratorio, and other things. We've got one, two, three oratorios. And here they are. Uh, Carissimi's oratorios are really early. He lived 1605 to 1674. They're, they're only in like three or four movements, or five or six movements. Was it four, four, and five in this case? 
um, with you know a few arias and solos and choruses, I find them impenetrably dull. But that's me. Gluck, oh Orpheus and Eurydice. Um, this is the good one with Anne Sophie von Otter and Bir Birgitta Fournier and Barbara Hendricks. And thank God, no countertenors. Yes, all women. They sing like crazy. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Berlioz, La Nuit d'été and Melodies with various people. This is one of those those Nuit d'été things where they break it up for among different singers. Um, and uh, let's see, and we've got the Obad and La Mort d'Ophelia, Ophelie, the death of Ophelia, and a bunch of orchestral songs. It's fun to have. It's a nice record. I'm not my favorite Nuit d'été. I prefer it with a single singer most of the time. But there we go. Oh, look at this. Stephen Isserlis. Tchaikovsky Rococo variations, Glazunov two pieces, some other sort of, you know, Tchaikovsky Glazunov minstrel, minstrel songs and with the Chamber Orchestra of Europe. And I, yeah, I mean, you know. More Gluck, yay! Les Pèlerins de Le Mec ou Le Rencontre Imprévu. Imprévu, this is fun. This is a Zingspiel. It's a Zingspiel. I mean, he made a French version of it, a comic opera. There's a German version of it. Um, it's the same story as Haydn's opera, L'Incontro Improviso, which is the same story as Mozart's The Abduction from the Seraglio. It's all one, all of the same type, you know, with percussion and fun songs and things. And this is great to have. Another wonderful, wonderful novelty. And finally, Tony Palmer's film of England, My England, the story of Henry Purcell with Purcell bits, which I can't be bothered with. So there you go. Now I get to sum up. As you can see, the Erato phase contained a lot of music that you can't get anywhere else. And that, to me, is its principal value. And fortunately, there's enough of it that I think justifies getting the box because, you know, you, you, we don't need, um, you know, another Handel Water Music or some of this other stuff that he did, Concerti Grossi Opus 3, you know, whatnot. But for the personal items, these were all new on period instruments when this stuff came out. It was exciting to hear these things, you know, done this way. It really was. And and the performances are all fresh and exciting and, you know, mostly really good. And the stuff he did in Lyon, the opera there, hmm, you know, it's kind of kind of cool that he did some of these pieces that no one else was doing. And and he discovered them and he deserves every bit of credit for it. And so and so there he is even kind of smiling. Wow. Gardner on Erato. 64 CDs, most of them are worth having. They truly are. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.